De Broglie was a doctorate student and a duke, and his thesis was sent to Einstein because his moderators didn't understand exactly what he was doing, and Einstein said he ought to get his doctorate degree, and this thesis was about electrons having the characteristics of waves as well as that of particles, as you would see in the video. This theory then made De Broglie win the Nobel Prize at that stage in the early 1900s. Shortly after there was discovered that light had characteristics of particles and waves, a French scientist, Louis de Broglie, suggested that any particle moving fast should have a wavelength associated with it. The particles investigated were electrons because they were small and they were moving fast. A British physicist, G.P. Thompson, was able to observe electron diffraction, which was proof that electrons had wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength is made out of formulas which Einstein thought out. The mass energy equation says that a photon has a formula HF where H is Planck's constant, F is the frequency of a photon which is equal to the mass of the equation E equals mc square. If we take V as the speed of a particle we got, we got out of this HF equals mv square and hv on lambda equals mv square. Therefore lambda is h on mv, where lambda is wavelength, h is Planck's constant, 6,63 times 10 to the power minus 34 joules per second, m the mass of a particle, and v the velocity of a The wavelength of a fast moving particle is Planck's constant, and in the equation it's divided by the momentum of it. The wavelength either of a, a bigger moving object like a cricket ball is so small that it cannot be observed by any known method. To indicate this, let's say the cricket ball is moving at 30 meters per second and that it had a mass of 0.15 kilograms. The de Broglie wavelength is given by lambda is equal to h on mv. So lambda is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 joules per second divided by 0.15 kilograms times 30 meters per second, which is equal to 1,5 times 10 to the power minus 34 meters. The answer is so small you cannot attach any meaning to it. Electrons, for example, can easily achieve a speed just 2% of the speed of light. At this speed, they cause wavelength diffraction elements which can be measured. That takes us to the electron microscope. Electrons are practically applied in the electron microscope. Because the wavelength of visible electrons is about a thousand times smaller than that of visible light, an electron microscope can see particles which an optical microscope cannot see. Magnetic fields is used to control and focus the electron beam. The electron beam then moves through a thin slice of material and an image is formed on the screen. The wavelength of the electron beam depends on the speed of the electron, which can be controlled by the voltage of the node. In the picture we see the different elements of a light and electron microscope. Further developments in the technology of the electron microscope led to the development of the tunnel microscope. The images on this microscope are so sensitive that it can prove images of individual rows of atoms.